Hi guys, welcome back to my channel and another Animal Artist Collective video. The theme for this month was Australian animals and I've been really looking forward to this one as I wanted to do something a bit different this time round. So today I'll be painting a great white shark using my acrylic paints on canvas. For those of you who haven't heard of the Animal Artist Collective, it is a group of artists here on YouTube that was founded by Denise Soden from In Liquid Colour and Jennifer Charlie of Jennifer Charlie Art to promote positive messages for animal welfare and conservation and connect artists to their communities. The collective has been going strong since 2018 now and both Denise and Jennifer have put in a huge amount of work over this time to ensure it's run smoothly. Sadly though, due to increasing workloads and other commitments, they have decided that this will be the last Animal Artist Collective video. I've really enjoyed being a member of such a great group of people and having a part in raising collectively $3,500 for over 40 protection agencies around the world. This has been possible because all the work produced from the collective each round is made available for sale and at least 50% of the proceeds of the sales are donated to non-profit animal conservation organisation. This month, being that we are painting Australian animals, we as a collective were unanimous in our decision to donate towards organisations that will specifically benefit the animals affected by the devastating bushfires. My chosen charity is Wires New South Wales and I'll leave a link to their website where you can find out more about donating as well as a link to my Etsy shop if you are interested in buying this original painting and helping out. I also still have the original koala painting available which I did recently to help the charity as well. So if you haven't seen that I'll leave a link to that at the end of this video. All the materials I've used will also be listed below if you're interested in checking them out. So with all that said, let's get into the video and find out some more about the Great White Shark and how I got on with my painting. The Great White Shark, or Carcaridon carcarius, is a creature that I've always been completely fascinated by, mainly I think because of its huge size and all those teeth. Also known as the Great White, or White Pointer, this creature is actually a species of large mackerel shark and can be found in the coastal waters of all the major oceans where the water temperature is between 12 and 24 degrees Celsius. In the open ocean though, it has been recorded at depths as great as 1,200 meters or 3,900 feet. Great white sharks are gray in color with a white underbelly from where they get their name. They have a streamlined torpedo shaped body which can weigh a whopping 2.2 tons or more and they can swim through the water at speeds of over 56 kilometers per hour that's 35 miles an hour so just how big are they well surprisingly the females of the species are usually larger in size than the males and can grow up to a massive 6.1 meters or 20 feet in length that's half the length of a bus most are smaller though with an average length of 15 to 16 feet. The males on the other hand average 3.4 to 4 meters or 11 to 13 feet. That's still pretty impressive and makes them the largest predatory fish on our planet. At the top of the food chain the great white shark has no natural predators other than on rare occasions the killer whale. It preys upon other marine mammals such as seals, sea lions and small whales and or smaller fish and despite what we may have believed or seen in films humans are not on the menu. There are between 5 to 10 reported attacks each year but it's thought that rather than preying on humans for dinner the shark is instead taking a sample bite just out of curiosity before swimming off. Reassured? No, me neither, especially since finding out that the diameter of an average shark's jaw is around 0.9 to 1.2 meters wide. Any creature unlucky enough to find itself in the jaws of this shark will also get a close-up of those triangular razor-sharp serrated teeth. A great white has up to seven rows of 300 teeth which attach onto the cartilage of the jaw. And unlike humans who have a set of baby teeth and a set of adult teeth, these sharks have a never-ending supply. If a tooth is lost during feeding, for example, there is another one right behind it to take its place. 
Throughout its lifespan, it's estimated that a shark will lose around 30,000 teeth in total. Great white sharks also have a strong sense of smell. In fact, they can detect a colony of seals two miles away and sniff out a single drop of blood in 100 litres of water. They can also detect minute changes in electromagnetic fields emitted by the movement of living animals, so there's really no escape. So they all have the tools and senses to make finding their next meal a breeze, but these beasts also possess the cunning to catch their prey by surprise. They usually swim up underneath their unsuspecting victim and often burst out of the water in a leap called a breach, before falling back down with their prey in their mouths and dragging it down to eat below. When hunting, great whites tend to separate, resolving any conflicts through a hierarchy system which is pretty complex. Females tend to dominate males, larger sharks tend to dominate smaller ones, and residents dominate newcomers. Combat is rare, but if a great white approaches too closely to another, they react with a warning bite. These guys are also one of only a few sharks known to lift their heads above the sea surface to gaze at other objects such as prey. This is known as spy hopping. So, all in all, these huge creatures don't sound the most friendly fish in the sea, so what about reproduction? Well, the average lifespan of the great white is estimated to be as long as 70 years or more, making it one of the longest-lived cartilaginous fish currently known. It's thought that the males take 26 years to reach sexual maturity, whilst the females take 33 years until they are ready to produce offspring, but little is known about the mating habits of these creatures. Eggs develop and hatch in the uterus and continue to develop until birth, some 11 months later in the spring summertime. The developing baby sharks, which vary in number from 2 to 10, will feed on over produced by the mother, but as soon as the pups are born, they need to make a dash for it, as female great whites do not care for their offspring. In fact, they may even try to eat them, so the newborns will immediately swim off into the ocean and fend for themselves. Sounds tough, but at birth the baby great white is already about 5 feet long and lives its life at the top of the ocean's food chain, so there's not too much to worry about from nature. Sadly however, they are under serious threat by human activity. Illegal hunting of these amazing beasts together with overfishing for sport and getting caught in beach protection netting have meant that today great white sharks are a vulnerable species on the IUCN red list. And in spite of official protections in Australia, great white sharks continue to be killed in state shark control programs to reduce shark attacks, which means that populations of great white sharks, particularly in eastern Australia, have decreased. These programs have been criticised by environmentalists and scientists because they harm the marine ecosystem. Ironically though, shark tourism activities such as cage diving for example, might actually be attracting more sharks with the lure of bait and so on. And there is a question as to whether these activities might actually alter sharks' natural behaviour as they learn to associate human activity with food. It seems so hard to get a good balance between enjoying and learning about all the animals in our world and making sure our activities don't interfere with the natural balance of things. But all too often we fail, for reasons that usually boil down to greed or money. My view may be too simplistic, as I'm aware that there are a lot of other factors to consider, but I have learned a lot about animal conservation since being part of the Animal Artists Collective, and I feel like there is a lot we still need to do and to change before it's too late and more of the animals we know and love become extinct. And in order to get the balance right, we need to respect the needs of our wildlife as well as our own. Okay, so now before we go on and talk a bit about this painting, I just want to give you a few fun facts about the great white shark. The first one is to do with food again. In a single year, one of these guys eats an average of 11 tonnes of food, and once they have fed, they can go a whole three months without another meal. Oh, and incidentally, the larger, stronger baby sharks will also eat other pups inside the mum's womb too. Next, a great white shark has a bite force which is 10 times that of a lion. And lastly, something I found interesting, because even the great white shark has a weakness. There had to be one, 
If you flip it on its back, it becomes immobile, and killer whales have actually used this tonic immobility as a method for attack. Right, so now let's talk a bit about this painting. As you may know, I've been really enjoying trying out acrylic paints lately, and I thought they'd be perfect to use for this piece too. I painted on a wooden board for my koala painting, but have gone back to canvas for this one purely because it's a lot lighter and easier to post. After a bit of colour swatching and trying out techniques, I decided to go for an A3 size, as I thought A4 wouldn't be big enough to show off all the details. And I began by applying a couple of coats of white gesso, followed by a few base coats of various blues mixed together. For the background I wanted to get a light burst effect, so added in some lighter shades of blue and some white to try and achieve this. I wasn't too sure to begin with if it was a bit stripy, but the advantage of using acrylic paints is that you can paint over them if you change your mind. I also used a flat brush and a side to side motion to paint some waves in at the top of the painting, again using a mixture of blues and a bit of turquoise. I mapped out the outline of the shark using first a grid followed by the reverse transfer method and my white charcoal pencil. This ensured neat crisp lines and meant I didn't have to erase on my canvas. And with all that done, I started painting the shark. For the first layer, I decided to mark in the darkest parts, starting with the eye and then moving on to the nose or snout, mouth and the tips of the fins. Then I marked out some of the highlights with white paint. On top of this very blue background, I knew I'd need to apply more than one layer, but it just helped me to get a feel for the values and where everything went. With the darkest and lightest values in, I then filled in the midtones using a mixture of greys, browns and blues, and blended them together whilst the paint was still wet to get smooth colour transitions. Great white sharks use a type of camouflage called countershading, which makes them hard to see in the water. So looking down into the water, their grey colour hides them from above, and looking up from underneath them, their white bellies are camouflaged by the lighter sky. In my reference photo though, and because of the angle of the photograph, the colours ranged from greys, browns, blues and violet on the top part of the body, to dark blues, turquoise and purples on the belly, so it was quite a challenge. It was all these colours and the reflected light that attracted me to the picture in the first place though, but it did take quite a few layers before I was happy with it. One thing I did again on this acrylic painting that I'm sure I've commented on before is that I worked in sections, which is probably a really slow way of doing things, as it would have been easier perhaps to have blocked out and blended the main colours of the body first and then added in the reflections afterwards. But for some reason I didn't do this, perhaps my inexperience with acrylics or lack of confidence. Once the first layer of the paintings was finished and completely dry, I did go back over a few of the highlight areas with my charcoal pencil, just to re-establish where they were and to make the next stage easier. It laid down fine, so it definitely would be worth me remembering that to save time in the next acrylic painting. Now painting water is not something I've had much practice with, and to be honest I usually try and avoid it, but surprisingly I think this turned out okay. I especially liked painting in the grey reflections above the shark as I think it helped to add realism and it wasn't as tricky as I thought it was going to be. What was tricky however was the mouth and teeth as despite this being an A3 canvas it was quite difficult to get the details of the teeth inaccurately. I did try to use a flesh colour and some brown here though to really help this part stand out from all that blue. Another part of this painting that was quite a challenge and something that I don't remember ever painting before is the lovely rainbow pattern where the light comes through the water and hits the shark's body. I think the second layer I applied with more white paint and better blending looked a lot more natural than the first attempt, but it was fun to experiment with something new. Once I was happy with all the colours and the values, I then repeated the whole process again applying enough layers to completely cover the canvas and give a nice smooth result. To finish off, all I had to do then was to redefine some of the brightest highlights with some white paint. I added a bit of flow improver to my paint here as well to make sure my lines were nice and crisp. Once the paint had dried, I was then able to use a few different colour glazes to slightly change the colours of the highlights in certain areas. 
So adding blue and purple at the back part of the body and lighter browns at the front. And with that, this painting was finished. I'll also be adding a coat or two of varnish to seal it all and give it a nice even sheen. I'm quite pleased with the final result, but let me know what you think in the comments below. I really hope you enjoyed the video and will go and check out the other members of the collective if you haven't already and give their channels your support. I would like to say a huge thank you to Denise and Jennifer for working so hard on the Animal Artist Collective and I wish them and the other amazing members of the collective all the very best for the future, wherever it takes you. Thank you so much for watching, have a great weekend and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye.